That's one heavy book. Have you done this before? Have you made any of these? Um. Hey everybody, uh, Justin Witte here. I am the curator at the Cleve Carney Museum of Art. Um, today I had the opportunity to have a conversation with the painter Sarah McEnany. Uh, Sarah is a painter based in Philadelphia. You may remember she was in the exhibition Mirror Face, which was at the Cleve Carney uh, Art Gallery in 2017, I believe. Um, Sarah and I talked about painting. We talked about her project of developing the rail park in Philadelphia, and we got a little secret tour of her home and studio. So here's my conversation with Sarah. Hey Sarah, uh, thank you so much for joining me today from your home and studio on the north side of Philadelphia. What's the neighborhood you're in? No, it's, it's official name is Callow Hill. Callow Hill, okay. When we were trying to pick a name, some of the real estate developers in the area wanted to call it the Loft District, which <laughs> couldn't stand. And some, some of us who really wanted Trestletown, then Callow Hill was kind of a compromise, you know. So you have a large kind of uh, house and studio there. For how many years have you been there? I have been here for over 40 years now. Oh my gosh. And how I has the neighborhood changed around there? It's changed a lot. So when I first moved here in 1979, it was a very industrial. So it'd be busy during the day, but it wasn't fully, you know, it was still a lot of vacancy, vacant land, vacant buildings. But during the day, it'd be like, you know, businesses going on. There was a flavor factory, there were print shops, there were uh -huh. sweatshops. And then at night it would be desolate and totally scary. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's kind of now it's, it's a mix district. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of the factory buildings have now been turned into condos or apartments. Yeah. And there's I have like a, a single building, which that's kind of a rarity in the neighborhood. There's only like um in terms of row houses, especially only like eleven or twelve row houses in the area. Okay. And your that that building, your building is the this kind of features prominently in, in all of your paintings, right? Yeah. The building inside, outside, the neighborhood, the rail park, all of that. Um, yeah, they're definitely um, often moments in time. Mm -hmm. And then but then like you said, some of the other things that make it into the painting or get edited out of the painting relate to that particular narrative. So uh, I'm thinking about one painting in particular, uh, Studio 2016, uh, made in 2016. And I'm wondering if you could uh, kind of walk us through, give us an example how important the items in the background and what looks like just a picture of your studio play in, in kind of the meaning and your thoughts while you're making the painting. Sure. So yeah, 2016, obviously made in 2016. And um, some important details like, so you can see me sort of on the left hand side and I'm telling my little dog there to sit. Now he was brand new in 2016, I adopted him in 2016. His name is Mango. So the animals, you know, make constant appearances in um, the paintings, both past and present animals, because then over on the wall above where all the paintings are, up high, there are paintings of animals, and there's three up there that have, are animals that have passed on, and then there's three that are the current animals, and you see the current cats on the table. Um, so that I'm always telling that story of my familiar companions, animals. And then there's a rail park painting. Um, so yeah, there's one of the, and then there's a painting of my yard. So it's this kind of like, here's the studio inside, and then you leave the studio and you're in the yard and then you leave the studio and you're in the neighborhood. So it's, it's really kind of about like moving around in my life and time and, and that the animals are about that too. So is that, is that a mirror in the back corner of the- Oh yes, that's a big mirror on an easel. And that also is telling because reflected in the mirror is an Obama poster from 2008 that I hung on the studio wall in 2008 and of course, we all know what happened in 2016. Yeah. And the, the poster is still there. Like I think back to even when I was a student, um, 
I kind of had this way of working that I was focused on. And even though I went, you know, I went to first the Philadelphia College of Art, University of the Arts for two years, and then I switched to the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. But I did not, I did not try to make academic paintings and neither did the faculty there try to get me to make those. They looked at what I was doing and just pushed me to push myself in the way I was working. And I always just wanted to draw and I liked, you know, I thought this is the way I draw and I'm going for a certain kind of accuracy. And I just stuck with that. And, um, and you know, like uh, even when I was in school, instead of painting the model in the, you know, in a figure painting class, I paint the whole room and, and the other students and stuff. So it was like, I started that narrative thing kind of early on and I had this thing that I was, you know, and actually, you know, I st when I was in like third grade, I decided I want to be an artist. And I took these Saturday painting classes with this woman in her home. She had groups of kids that she taught oil painting to. And I kind of like, I feel like I started then. You've been instrumental in, in bringing to Philly what is what I think is one of the most popular parks in the city now. Is that correct? Yeah. The rail park. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that? I first moved here in 1979, there was a, a train line, an elevated train line that went into Reading Terminal, which is one of those big old fashioned, you know, shed, train sheds like mm -hmm. you used to see, and maybe there's still some left in Europe. Um, anyway, those trains stopped running in 1984 because they built a tunnel that connected the three train stations in Philadelphia all together. They called it the commuter tunnel. And those tracks quickly just became Mother Nature took over and became like a spontaneous park slash garden, but they were just abandoned by the Reading Company. Okay. So they sat there for a long time and, um, you know, it was around the time of the High Line when they were, I think, just about getting, getting ready, maybe close to opening their first section. It was in 2003 that myself and a neighbor, because after the tracks closed. I used to walk up there and then I know lots of people walked up there and people would go up there and just check it out. An elevated train line, you know, you get up above the street and you can walk for blocks, you know, and right. no, no cars. And it also cuts through the neighborhood on a diagonal, kind of a curving diagonal. So it's really dramatic. And yeah. And uh, so we started a nonprofit group, the Reading Viaduct Project to lobby, advocate, to make it into a park similar to the High Line. And, um, and then, you know, over the years, that was in 2003, other people joined the effort and, and finally in 2016, the first, we broke ground on the first section. Yeah. And it opened in June of 2018. Yeah, it is a huge success and I feel so lucky that it's in my neighborhood because I can go there every day. Yeah. With the mask on, I go there about oh, three times a day. Keeping your distance. You know, just to think about this, this space, you always imagined you could see the potential of it without yeah. ever knowing how exceedingly important a space like that would be in, in this moment, you know, to right. give people, you know, a space to get out of their homes some fresh air right. and to, you know, right. now that we're in spring, some beauty. I think that that's just right. a phenomenal legacy. Persistence and, you know, not stopping. And, you know, in this neighborhood, as I talk about it, like I said earlier, there's only like 11 or 12 row houses in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Everybody else lives in these converted factory buildings. So people don't have yards. I'm lucky I have a yard, but they don't even have like a stoop to sit on. So right. we really needed a neighborhood park and there was nothing in this whole area. There was no park. Right. So it's really made a difference. Well, well would you mind giving us a little tour of your space? Walk okay. Around? It is in progress, and this is definitely timely. So this is me. <laughs> I'm having a Zoom with all my animals. So here's another um, pain reflecting our time right now. You can see what I'm doing here. This is in progress. Yeah, good washing hands. <laughs> and I got a self-portrait going here. Yeah. So, what else? Did I show you anything else? No, I think that's good. That was great. 